Sometimes a project comes along where you can just let your creativity free and do things outside of what you're used to. One of my local gaming stores announced that they were holding a competition and I decided to join for the fun of it. In my eyes, this was a good opportunity to experiment with new techniques and not care too much about how it turns out. The exact opposite of what you're supposed to do when painting for competitions. This is not going to be a painting video where everything goes as planned. Hello and welcome to the Creative Kobold. I'm Gaira and in this video I'll be working on my entry for a small miniature painting competition held by one of my local gaming stores. The store handed out Warhammer 40k Space Marines and we were to paint them up based on a Nintendo game of our choice. We could modify the mini by adding to it, but not by removing anything. Only one entry per person and the winner will be judged on creativity, not overall painting skills. Also, it needs to be on the base it comes with. Now, I'm not really into 40k and Space Marines, but I have played a lot of Nintendo games throughout my life, and one I played a lot as a child was Duck Hunt for the NES. In this game, you had a controller in the shape of a pistol and you aimed it at ducks flying around on the screen. If you hit a duck, you'd score points, and it'd fall down into the tall grass. Your dog would pick them up and display them to you. If you missed, well, then your dog would laugh at you. When I first saw the competition, I immediately got the idea for the Duck Hunt theme. After assembling the mini, I found the other pieces I wanted to use. An old, cheap plastic tree I've used for D&D, and a space halfling freebie I got from a troll trader Kickstarter that I'll paint up as a duck. I cut off the base of the tree and drilled holes in it, and into the miniature's base. Since the hot water method didn't work with the tree's plastic, I used a lighter to slightly melt the branches just enough so that I could angle them differently. And used a wooden rod as a peg to help it stay put. A little bit of paper towel helped secure it. Then I glued the halfling on top of one of the branches. I didn't want the base to include those weird ruin things. This base is going to have tall grass on top of soil, so I used some acrylic texture medium to cover the entire thing. Then I got some printer paper and started cutting out dog ears. I considered using green stuff, but decided on the paper instead. I glued the two tiny pieces of paper onto the Space Marine, shaping them to be as much like those on the Duck Hunt Dog as possible. I used more super glue to harden them and give them a bit more thickness. I also use a bit of thick wire to add a cord from the bottom of the grip on the gun and going back into that backpack thing he's got. After all, the NES Zapper does have a cord. Next, I quickly primed the whole thing black, then it was time to get to work painting. But I was going to have fun with this and try some new things. Normally, you'd want to show off the skills you've accumulated over your painting career. I, however, decided to do several things I hadn't really done before, 
The first of these being airbrushing. Now, technically, I've airbrushed a few times before, but only to prime or varnish a mini, never to actually paint. And I'm also not used to the technical intricacies that comes with the airbrush, but I had decided on just having fun and trying out new things and do a bit of learning. So that's what I did. I might not win, but if I can learn something, that'll be a win in itself. Perhaps because I was doing this thing I hadn't done before, I decided to use paint color straight out of the bottle instead of mixing the perfect brown. Being too focused on getting the airbrushing technique down, I messed up the most basic thing ever. The result was that I had to repaint the entire body not once, but twice. The first layer was too brown, the next layer was too red but I decided to let it stay like that for now. I started painting parts of the Space Marine's gun. My idea was to make the gun look like the NES Zapper, the gun-like controller used for playing Duck Hunt and other such games on the console. It was grey and redly orange. After that, I start doing my second repaint of the body, this time by brush, and with a properly mixed color. Then I start highlighting, a lot of edge highlighting, but also some surface highlights. And I add some black to the ears. At this time I also notice that the ring around the neck on the armor sort of looks like a collar, so I paint that black as well. It's time to move away from the dog and work on our duck a bit. 
There are three different color schemes for the ducks in Duck Hunt, but I'm going for the one that will differ the most from both the dog and the tree. I did use the airbrush earlier to put a white base coat on him. For the face and feet, I go for a skin tone that will end up with a more yellow hue, which is going to represent the yellow beak and legs of the duck. Now I start painting his back armor and pauldrons blue. This fits very well with the duck, which has a white belly and blue back. The helmet is painted magenta, like the duck's head. And I do some highlighting of the Halfling's helmet. Okay, back to the Space Marine a bit. I'm painting the face a light beige, like the dog's muzzle. On the Space Marine's gun, there is a crest with a winged skull. Before priming, I added a small drop of superglue to the skull, obscuring it. Now I'm starting to paint this crest up like the face of a duck with wings. It'll be a silly duck with googly eyes. Back to the halfling again, I added highlights to the blue armor pieces. Then I start to accentuate the shapes of the face. On the Space Marine, I work some more on the highlights. Time to work on the tree, I'm just going to coat it with a redly brown.
Okay, time for the next experiment. Oil washes. I've got some oil paints and white spirit, and I mix up what seems to be a decent wash using brown and black. Then I add that to the entire miniature. After that, I use a clean, dry brush to brush away any excess oil wash. I'm mainly brushing in a downwards direction, and I reapply some wash where I remove too much. When finished, I let it sit for some hours to dry. Okay, the oil wash has dried, and now my mistake becomes apparent. The white spirit has dissolved some of the paint on one of the pauldrons. The thing I did wrong was to not varnish the mini before applying the white spirit. Lesson learned. I use a knife to peel off the ruined paint on the pauldron, then I just start repainting it again. That's what I get for experimenting, epic fails, and also great experience. I choose to add some of the paint to the other pauldron, as well as other parts of the armor, to help even out the look a bit. Honestly, I find this easier than to try and just fix the pauldron perfectly at this point. Yet it also means I need to redo a lot of the highlights. But before that, I work on some more details and highlighting for the hoplink. Okay, I've not given up on that oil wash step. This time I've varnished the mini properly before applying the wash a second time. Then again, using vertical downwards brush strokes to remove excessive wash.
At this point I'm starting to stress a bit about the time limit for the competition. Even if this isn't going to be the best entry, I do want to have it ready and delivered on time. That's part of the fun. So even if not all the oil wash has dried, I continue painting where I can, mainly working on more highlights and detail. When I think most of the regular paint job is finished, I start adding some simple freehand to the pauldrons. The pauldrons are large canvases begging for some extra detail, so I choose to paint a duck on one pauldron and the number 500 on the other, in the style of the points you get in Duck Hunt.
After that, I touch up the highlights and details on the Space Marine a bit, and also give the gun some much needed attention. Finally, I put some black null oil on the tree to darken it, and hopefully separate it a bit more from the Space Marine, as they're both brown. Okay, now the tree needs leaves, and I've taken these flat canopy parts and melted them into balls to go more with the aesthetic of the game. For grass, I have this plastic plant thing, and I've cut all the grass straws off so I can place them individually on the base. I quickly dry brush the canopy parts before gluing them onto the tree. Of course, I could have used more typical tufts and flock and all that stuff, but I actually prefer not to use that on my minis, and didn't have it laying around. So instead I decided to just use what I had, and I think it works pretty good. I used some T9000 glue for applying the grass to the base. This glue had almost dried up, so I cut it open and dipped the straws into it. In the end, this is what I ended up with. I'm going to say that this was far from my best paint job, but I did learn a lot. And most of all, I had a lot of fun working on this. I also think that if you know of the game, you will immediately recognize this as Duck Hunt. Before handing in the mini, I showed it off to some friends and one of them had a great idea I hadn't thought of. Add the duck counter from the game onto the black base. 
And so I did that in a hurry before taking the miniature to the store. There were some other great entries. One had modified the Space Marine with so much green stuff, they'd gotten to make it look like Yoshi. Another Space Marine had gotten a hat and was painted up like Waluigi. There were great Link and Sheik paint jobs, and a black and white Pokemon inspired entry. And many other great Nintendo inspired paint jobs on this Warhammer 40k Space Marine sculpt. The winner was announced about a week later. My Duck Hunt Space Marine actually won the competition! I had not expected that! In fact, I didn't actually want half the price, which was a set of Citadel paints, as I personally prefer other paints above them. But the fact was, I had won! My very first painting competition, and I had won! Again, this was a small competition and was based more on creativity than skill, and there were certainly entries that had technically better paint jobs than mine. But in the end, my Duck Hunt Space Marine, which had basically been turned into a mini diorama of sorts, had been considered the most creative of the entries. To paraphrase the store owner, Looking at it was like being back in my childhood actually playing Duck Hunt again. And if that's not a great compliment, I don't know what is. My prize was the paint set, as well as a free choice of any small Warhammer box of minis from their store. I think I spent at least half an hour trying to decide what to get, as there were several I wanted. But eventually I landed on this set of Felbats. As for the set of paints, well, I think I'm going to give them away to a lucky viewer sometime very soon, so stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video, this was a long one, but that's how it is sometimes. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.